It is good to see everyone out today, and uh, sun is coming out, they tell us, and I think it's on its way now from the looks of things outside. So we'll be glad to get over the rainy days and back to some sunshiny days. But uh, we're just glad everybody's here this morning. And uh, as Rudy said earlier, remember to look at your prayer list throughout the week and then uh, pray for folks who really need the touch of God. Pray for a family that's uh, uh, in some difficulty this morning and uh, we've had a chance to talk to them a little bit, but uh, just special need there with uh, a family this morning to just keep that on your heart and mind throughout the day. We have been talking in our series uh, on the living Savior that we have, Jesus Christ. We celebrated His resurrection on Easter Sunday morning, celebrated that together and enjoyed that special time remembering that we do serve a risen living Savior, Amen. not one that's uh, in some tomb somewhere or that is uh, far away from us, but one who is alive and with us every day that we live. So we're thankful for a living Savior. And today we're going to talk about the words that we just sang about and Kathy read a few moments ago. These come out of the book of John. We're going to use the title for the message today very simply, The Bread of Life. In John chapter number 6, there are many occasions where Jesus refers to this, but we'll just read the one as a springboard, and then we will look at, back at some of the others and then forward to some as well. Now here, just one simple little verse, verse 48 of John chapter 6. John 6, verse 48. Jesus himself says these words. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Now, this was in a series that we did not long ago on the I am's of Jesus. So we touched base on uh, this idea and this thought that Jesus gives, I am the bread of life. We touched on that a little bit. But I want us to take a little closer look at it again today and just realize that in Jesus, we have the bread of life that we need to sustain us in our daily walk with Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. We do thank you again for the opportunity to be here to worship and fellowship together. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, your love, your care for us. Lord, I pray right now every heart would be in tuned to your message today. The words are not my words. They're not from me. They're from you. And I pray that we'll be in tune. We'll listen. We'll be encouraged. We'll be strengthened. We'll be challenged by what you've given us today. And Lord, I pray you'd be in the business meeting to follow. Your will would be done there. We pray most of all for those who might not know Jesus Christ. Today would be their day of salvation, for it's in his name we pray. Amen. We have a living Savior. Because of that, we have eternal life. We talked about that first, and that's our future promise with our Heavenly Father in heaven for all of eternity. In a living Savior, we also we talked last week, we have abundant life. We have life here on this earth that can be joyful, that can be happy, that can be filled with all of the promises and everything that God has given us. So we have abundant life, we have eternal life. Today we're going to talk about we have the bread of life. Jesus Christ himself says, I am the bread of life. He also goes on there in verse 49 and says, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. And in other words, the bread of, of this earth is not going to sustain you throughout life. He said in verse 50, This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Verse 51, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. So this is a promise that we have from Jesus himself, that he is the bread of life. He is the sustaining bread that we will need every day in this life. And he is the bread of life that provides for us not only that abundant life, but that eternal life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. The reason he talked about bread to the children of Israel so predominantly in the scripture is because bread was uh, their everyday main source of the things that they needed in life. They made fresh bread every day. And they had it fresh in their homes 
to supply the needs of their family. The, the wheat crops were vital to them and to their uh, survival. And so he talks to them about something that is common to them in their daily life. Now today, if my wife sends me to the store to get a loaf of bread, I just go get, what is it? Nature's own honey wheat. Is that what I get? Okay. I usually remember that. <laughs> Nature's own honey wheat bread. That's what I go get. Because she says that's the best that we can get for what we are need. I don't know. But anyway, we get nature's own honey wheat. Oh, it's our son's favorite bread, I'm told. But anyway, uh, I, I know what brand to buy when I go there. But when I walk into that section, there's bread everywhere. I mean, there is more bread than you can imagine. All flavors and kinds and the... Uh, you, have, you have to read the you have to read the th labels to see how much sodium it's got in it and all that kind of stuff so it meets your proper diet. They've got a bread called Wonder Bread. Do you all know what that is? Yeah, I wonder too. But uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes you, you know, there's all of these different breads. When I was growing up, you know how many choices of bread I remember in the grocery store. I remember Sunbeam. I don't know about you, but that's the bread I just remember is Sunbeam bread. Maybe you remember some other bread. But it didn't seem to have the array of bread when I was growing up and you went to the grocery store. Now, the best bread you're going to get is probably bread that's in a bakery where they have baked it fresh for you, where you can go in, buy it, and enjoy it, right? Right? So uh, bread is something we understand today a little bit differently than they did. But I'm going to give you several things today about bread that I think are significant in the bread that we eat and sustain our physical life with, but as in comparison to our Savior Jesus Christ and what he meant, what he said. First of all, bread is best when it is broken, when you actually... Take the loaf of bread and you break it open if you bought it fresh out of the bakery. I mean, that, that's, that's when it's good. You just want to reach in there and grab a hold of that and eat it and enjoy that fresh bread that's there. When it's broken apart. Now, when we buy it in the store, it's already been sliced. Or if you buy it in the bakery, they got a slicer over there that will slice it for you. But have you ever just gotten a loaf of bread that was not cut in any way, shape, form, or fashion, and you just ripped it open and ate it from it? And that's when it's really good, right? When it's broken for us. Well, what Jesus is saying here when he says, I am the bread of life, he said, I am the bread of life that was broken for you. His body, that's what we do on the occasion of communion. We remember his broken body that was given for us. That's what we remember and when we share the bread and when we give of the bread is that broken bread. The scripture uh, is very clear when Jesus was teaching his disciples in chapter 26 of Matthew. We'll look at verse 2 and then we'll look to verse 26. But Jesus' words say in verse 2, you know that after two days is the, uh, is the feast of the Passover and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. And then in verse 26 of that same chapter, he is breaking the bread. He says, And when they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And then he tells us to do this in remembrance of him every time that we partake. So we're told to remember and to celebrate the broken body of Jesus Christ because he is our bread of life. He is that bread that we need in our lives daily for spiritual sustenance. He met there in the upper room and instituted the Lord's Supper. He broke the bread and said, this is a reminder of my broken body that will be shed for you. Now at that point in time, he hadn't been crucified yet. He hadn't been beaten yet. He hadn't been through all of that, but it was about to happen. And now we get to reflect back on it and remember that great suffering and that struggle that Jesus took for us. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse number 5, the scripture says, uh, But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. 
Amen. His broken body provided for us that wonderful promise that was given there in Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5 and other verses. So we have the broken bread in Jesus Christ for us. For us. He was broken. He was bruised. He was beaten. He was crucified for you and for me. The spear was placed in his side to prove that he was dead and no longer alive. That was done for you and that was done for me. The second thing I want to talk to you about, not only is bread best when it's broken and Jesus was at his best when he was broken for us, but bread has a sweet and is sweetest when it's fresh. When it's fresh. Do you like the smell of fresh bread? Well, if you like the smell of fresh bread, you would really like a place called Wheat Montana Bakery in Three Forks, Montana. We went there as we were traveling one day to one of the Baptist meetings in the state. We lived over on the east coast of Montana, over almost in North Dakota. We were in what they call the Badlands. And uh, we tried to be good, but we were in the Badlands. And uh, then on the other side of the state, where you would start going up into the mountainous area, and this Three Forks was after you had passed uh, passed by Bozeman and on your way up to Butte you would come to this and then we would turn and go up to Helena for the meeting we were going to. But everybody had told us about this bakery, Wheat Montana. Said you've got to stop. You have to stop at Wheat Montana uh, Bakery in Delhi. You just have to stop there. So when we get off the interstate and we start toward it, suddenly you can start smelling this bakery. It's a huge bakery there. You can start smelling the aroma. You pull in the parking lot, you're overcome with the smell of the bakery. You walk inside of that bakery and you're going to buy something. You are not going to leave without it because the smell overwhelms you. I mean, it's just covers you up. You ever go to, Margaret says, cinnamon rolls that big. Okay, honey, and that's what you got, by the way, was a cinnamon roll that big. But, uh, uh, I mean, it's like going into McFarland's uptown. You know, it just has that smell, right? How many of you remember the old townhouse bakery in Asheville? Some of you old as me and old enough. Just the smell. It just, you went in there, you were going to buy something because the smell was so overpowering. Well, the songwriter said, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. And if we'll let Jesus, he will be that sweetness that we need in our lives every day as we walk with him on this earth. Ephesians chapter two, uh, chapter five, excuse me, in verse number two, it says, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Amen. Yeah. That's what he did for you and me. He gave us that sweet smelling savor of himself when he died on Calvary's cross. He paid that price. He was the ultimate sacrifice. The one that paid the price for the sin of mankind past and the sin of mankind present Amen. and the sin of mankind future. Isn't that good? I mean, that, and that to God is a sweet smelling savor. Jesus is the sweetest name I know and he's just the same. As his lovely name. And that's the reason why I love him so. For Jesus is the sweetest name I know. That's what the songwriter said. If you ever get a chance to go to Wheat Montana Bakery there in Three Forks, Montana, you will understand what I'm talking about. You will be overwhelmed by the aroma. I'm going to tell you something. If you ever really get close to Jesus Christ in your walk daily, You'll be overcome by the sweet smell of Jesus Christ and what he did for you on Calvary's cross. And you can't help but tell somebody about it. Rick was talking in Sunday school this morning about we have an obligation as Christians to tell others about Jesus Christ so they can be reconciled to him as we are. If you're overcome with Jesus, you can't help but tell somebody about Jesus. Jesus is the sweet-smelling savor 
<clears throat> that was offered as a sacrifice for you and for me. Thirdly, I want to talk with you this morning about something else about bread that I found out. Bread has a filling effect when it's eaten. Bread, bread will fill you up. It will provide that fullness that you need when you're hungry. There's nothing better than a good piece of bread. You can put peanut butter on it and jelly on it and you can make it. You can, put, you can get bread and put cheese on it and melt it or eat it plain. You can get bread and... My dad used to just take bread and dip it in milk. I never did get that habit, thank the Lord, but some people enjoy that. Bread, you can just, you have some kind of bread with almost every meal you eat. You do. Some kind of wheat is involved in almost every meal you eat. It's true. Unless you're a vegetarian. But I guess a vegetarian can eat bread, right? I don't know, it comes from the ground. But anyway, anyhow, <clears throat> whenever you eat bread, or at least for me, you'll get that full feeling in your stomach because they tell us of either the gluten that is in it, the content that is there, or the yeast that is fermented in the bread and has made it full in its side. When you put yeast in bread, you know it rises. You know how that works. And so uh, that's how you get that full feeling if you eat too much of it, you can get a bloated feeling, I'm told. But uh, it, your body will then eventually break that down, and turn it into the right nutrients and avenues that it goes to help your body uh, be the best that it can be. If we will feast on Jesus like we feast on bread. Now all I can tell you is, there must be a lot of bread eating in the world because the bread aisles are always full of many, many different kinds of bread. Bakeries, how many loaves of bread did y'all sell at Ingalls Bakery in a day? Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> but just in the bakery area. Yeah, in the bakery Sometimes area. They couldn't, keep up with they couldn't even cook enough bread. They cook it fresh and couldn't even cook enough because people eat a lot of bread. You know, if people would eat a lot of Jesus from the Word, if we'd take this in, then the world would be a better place to live, wouldn't it? Amen. He said, I'm the bread of life. I will fill you. The songwriter said, Jesus is the sweetest name I know. But then another songwriter wrote, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Amen. Only Jesus can give you that full feeling. Only Jesus can give you that satisfaction and contentment that you need in your daily walk with Jesus Christ. It only comes from Him. You won't get it from this world. They'll try to sell you a bill of goods, but it won't work. Matter of fact, you won't get it from religion either. Some people will try to sell it to you through church. No, no, no. It comes through Jesus. It comes through Jesus and through Him alone. He is the bread that satisfies, that fills. He fills every longing in your heart. He fills every need in your heart. He fills every vacant place in your heart. He is the one who provides that filling for us in our lives. And then number four, I like this one. It's, I guess that's why I chose it to be last uh, because I think it just says what Jesus was trying to say when he said, I am the bread of life. Bread is essential for physical life. Bread is necessary the physical life. You say, how do you know that? Well, here's why. Because number one, it contains carbohydrates. Carbohydrates provide energy. So we have the energy to work and move and do things in life. We need carbohydrates. So you get it basically, mainly from bread, other areas, other things like that. Bread also contains the B vitamins like vitamin B1 and vitamin B3, which are essential for our body to take the energy that has been provided through carbohydrates and then release it in our body to give us the energy we need for the daily activities. So bread is necessary. It is an essential part of living because of the carbohydrates and the vitamin Bs that we have in our body. Bread also contributes protein to our bodies, which causes an 
increases growth. It also improves development and repair to our bodies when it's needed. So you've got, you've got uh, carbohydrates, you've got the vitamin Bs, and you've got protein that bread provides in your body. They tell us that bread also provides a low level of fat in our body to help balance out our diets. Doesn't overdo it, it just has a low level of fat in the diet. It also adds iron to our bodies. Iron aids in red blood cell production in our bodies, which is certainly necessary to, for us to uh, have the blood cells that we have and have the oxygen provided in our bodies for us to be able to live. Isn't that interesting? All that just through bread? All that through bread. Now my doctor tells me I'm not supposed to eat white bread anymore. I'm supposed to eat more of the, the grain or the wheat type of bread. I don't know what the difference is. I grew up on white bread and uh, I made it a long way on white bread, but uh, now I eat wheat bread. But I'm still eating bread because bread is still an essential part of life. It also provides calcium in our bodies for helping with our strength with our teeth and our bones. You, you, you like having good teeth, right? That helps you eat and chew the things that you need. You, you do like healthy bones, right? That's what keeps you upright. That's what keeps you moving. So bread provides a whole lot of stuff physically, doesn't it? Isn't that interesting? You never thought that much about it when you're walking down the bread aisle, right? No, Margaret said get nature's own honey wheat. That's what I think about walking down the bread aisle. But you see, it's... Bread is essential to life, physically. Jesus Christ said, I am the bread of life, and he wasn't talking physically. He was talking spiritually. In Matthew chapter number 4, and verse number 4, uh, Jesus said these words, It is written, Man shall not live by bread, that's the bread we've been talking about, alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. I am what you need spiritually in your heart and in your life every day to help you to grow and be the best Christian that you can be. The Bible often refers to bread as the staff of life or the, sta the uh, staff of bread is referred to in the scripture on many occasions because it was important to physical life. Jesus just simply makes a short statement and says, I am the bread of life. I am what you need in your life every day. I'm what you need physically. I'm what you need spiritually, not what you need physically. Physically, we do need the bread of this earth, but spiritually, we need the heavenly bread of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The psalmist says in Psalm 105, in the 40th verse, he says, The people ask, and he brought quails, and he satisfied with bread from of heaven. Now that's not the bread Jesus is talking about. That's the bread of manna that they were blessed with every day. When they were wandering in the wilderness, God provided the bread for the day. But on Calvary, he provided the bread of life. Amen. Eternal life. The life that we have in our living Lord and our living Savior. Back in John chapter number 6, up there in verse number 33, Jesus said, For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. There's a difference in the manna bread or the bread physically and the heavenly bread, the bread of Jesus Christ. He is that bread of life. It says in verse 35, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. So powerful words from our Savior, Jesus Christ. On down in that same passage in verse 51, I read a moment ago, he said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. The bread that I will give is my flesh, and I will give for the life of the world. Isn't that good news? Yes. 
Isn't that good news? He's the life for the world. Matthew 4 and then actually in Luke chapter 4 and verse number 4 it says the same thing. Man shall not live by bread alone. I'm glad that we don't have to be dependent on the bread of this earth for our spiritual strength because it wouldn't do us any good, would it? Physically, yes. But I'm thankful that we have the bread of life. I'm thankful that we have it recorded for us in this wonderful book that we call the Bible. It's important to try and have a healthy physical life, yes. You should do everything that you can to be healthy physically. Sometimes that's difficult. I'm finding that true for me of late for some reason. But we still need to try and do our best. But I can tell you this, if you'll feast on Jesus, your spiritual life will be the best it's ever been. Amen. If you'll just feast on Jesus Christ. I hear people all the time going on new diets and all these new programs, you know, to get healthy and to lose weight and all those other things. And I think what we need is, folks, we just need to get on a diet of Jesus. Enjoy that preciousness of the bread of life that Jesus offers us through his death, his resurrection, his ascension, and his promised return. We serve a living Savior who provides for us the bread of life that we need daily. If you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today needs to be your day of salvation. It needs to be the day when you turn it all over to the Lord and give Him your life completely and let Him be your Savior and the Lord of your life. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just pray now that you'd bless and use the message for your glory in each life today and encourage us and help us to realize you are that bread of life that we need. Lord, we pray now you'd also bless as we go into our business meeting for just a few moments that your will would be done, the church would be encouraged, and we would follow your leadership. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.